Tuma laments that the recent events in the Academy City have thrown his life upside down. After the discovery of his right arm's power to nullify all magic abilities, he met a strange girl called Index, and after that he kept getting attacked by all sorts of people. But just as he hoped things were calming down, the entire world got on the brink of war. With foreign groups like the Roman Catholic Church and the God's Right Seat, he found himself in the middle of all that chaos, confused with everything that was going on. In school, he gets in trouble with his friends, Monoharu, Pierce, and Siri, so the teachers make them stay after the classes are over, but Motoharu and Pierce bail, leaving Tuma and Siri on their own to do the chores. Since Tuma is late in coming home, Index gets hungry, and while answering the door to Meka, ends up letting the cat escape. An old woman manages to calm the cat down and return it to Index. Upon hearing that Index and the kitty are hungry, the woman treats them to lunch. On the way home, Tuma runs into Mikoto, who confronts him for never answering her message. She stoops on his phone and finds her own mom in his pictures and contacts, this enrages the short-tempered girl and she fires her electric powers at him, only calming down after he neutralizes her attack with his right arm. Tuma uses this chance to explain that there is nothing going on between him and her mother, quickly making a getaway when she turns around. Index thanks the old woman for the food, telling her about Tuma before they part ways. That same old woman intercepts Tuma as he is returning home, holding him at gunpoint and forcing him to follow her. After they reach a secluded place, she introduces herself as Monaka revealing that she is a member of the Academy City's board of directors. She tells him that the recent events in the world are caused by a supernatural ability and his own ability. The imagined breaker located in his right hand can be used to de-escalate the situation. Before she can tell him more, Motoharu shows up and shoots her on the spot. Toma quickly reacts and attacks him, but Monaka stops him, explaining that the board wishes for the situation to escalate so they would have an excuse to wipe out the Roman Catholic Church. Not wanting that to happen, she went against the board, so she had to be stopped this way to make sure the board does not go after her family instead. Motoharu gets back up and reassures Monaka that she played her role perfectly and should relax, as he will take over now. Then he proceeds to explain the mission to Tuma, bringing him along on a supersonic jet to fly into France, where the Roman Catholics have their mystic artifact, the Sea Document, which is the key to resolving all of this mess. After being dropped from the plane, Tuma is saved from drowning by a girl that was waiting on his arrival, Itsua. Thanks to Motohara's briefing during the flight, Tuma is able to explain to Itsua how the sea document is capable of making all of the believers in the Roman Catholic Church think whatever the Pope declares to be the truth, hence why the locals started thinking that the Academy City are the bad guys. But it can be used only in specific locations, so they are sure it is currently in the city. Unfortunately, the protests against the Academy City are in full swing, and they get spotted by some of the protesters. Identifying Tuma to be from Academy City, they start chasing after him. The two of them manage to slip away, and since Tuma is unable to contact Motoharu, they decide to head for the Papal Palace on their own. However, the protesters have the entire palace surrounded, making it impossible for them to get any closer. Finally making contact with Motoharu, Tuma learns that he is having trouble getting in as well. So, in order to prevent the Roman Catholics from using the sea document, Motoharu suggests Tuma disables the magical pipeline connecting this place to Vatican. While he will continue trying to make progress on his end. Thanks to Itsua, they quickly locate where the pipeline lies and she starts using a magical ritual involving some mundane items including panties to dispel the magic concealing it. But before she can finish her magic ritual, they get attacked by a member of the right sea of God, Terra of the Left. He does not want for anyone to prevent them from using the sea document, so he is determined to end them then and there. Tuma and Itsua quickly find themselves on the defense perplexed by Terra's strange power. Terra has the upper hand thanks to his very strange ability, but Tuma is able to keep both of them alive thanks to his imagined breaker. Suddenly, Motoharu joins the fray, but before they can turn the tide and defeat Terra, Academy City's unmanned military attacks and interrupts their fight. Terra quickly retreats, leaving Motoharu, Tuma, and Itsua behind. Motoharu decides to distract the Academy City's troops, giving the other two an opening to focus on their mission once more. Wondering why Academy City acted, Tuma calls Mikoto to ask her what is going on there, but before they can talk, Terra jumps them once again, this time carrying the sea document with him. Just as they resume their fight, bombers from Academy City arrive and start raining fire and destruction all over the area. Although Isua gets knocked out by Terra, Tuma continues on his own, and his imagined breaker allows him to fight for long enough to completely understand how Terra's ability works. Thanks to that, he is able to counter it and defeat Terra. Once he tries to pick up the sea document, his imagined breaker completely dissolves the magical artifact, destroying it without leaving anything behind. At the same time, the defeated Terra reveals that Tuma has lost his memory, 
as he does not know something crucial about the Imagine Breaker. Unfortunately, just as he is about to reveal what Tuma has forgotten, Terra gets obliterated by the bombers. As it happens, this has not killed him as he managed to escape back to his headquarters. There he gets confronted by another member of the Right Seed of God, Aqua of the Back. Aqua is unhappy that Terra not only lost the sea document but has also used innocence to polish his ability. Deciding to punish him for it on the spot, he puts Terra into the ground with his overwhelming power. Afterwards, he decides to take matters into his own hands and set out for Academy City. In Academy City, things are heating up as the organization called Group, whose leader happens to be Motoharu, violently captures an important person. Meanwhile, their newest member, Accelerator, pressures a scientist to give him what he needs to adjust his choker. The retrieval of the captured person goes south when another party gets in the way, destroying the transport vehicle and taking him out. While Group is trying to find information in the captured person's apartment, their operative, Unabara, gets attacked by special forces. But once other members arrive at the apartment, they find out that he managed to use magic to blend in with the attackers, while leaving behind the information they were looking to find for them. Thanks to that, they find out their professional sniper has been hired to take out Monaka while she is holding a speech. Realizing that this is happening right now, they think it is too late to act, but Accelerator comes up with a genius idea and blows up a car near the venue, causing a commotion and forcing the speech to be cancelled. This successfully thwarts the assassination attempt. After doing more research, they learn that the organization behind this is called School. In addition to them, three other organization names popped up, specifically Member, Block, and Item. It is then that Item is also getting ready to act. They decide to go after School and take them out before they can accomplish whatever their goal is. After tracking them down and confronting them, things take a turn for the worse as School proves to be too much for them to handle, and they are forced to change their plans. It turns out that the second strongest Esper, a guy named Taitoku, is a part of School. They get intercepted by school along the way and have to split up once more. Although the three of them manage to slip away, Taitoku has achieved his objective and got his hands on some advanced technology. Reasoning what he could use it for, Group, who's keeping an eye on the situation, starts shutting down important terminals to prevent them from getting hacked, but one is not responding. At that moment, Lunabara, who is still blending in with the enemy, contacts them, stating that the organization called Block is scheming to hack into the Auxiliary Satellite Control Center. This causes Accelerator to immediately head out to that destination, leaving the non-responsive terminal to others. At the control center, both Taitoku and Accelerator get ambushed by the organization member, but member is not up to the challenge, and they get beaten easily. As Block moves to act with a force of 5,000 mercenaries, Unabara blows his cover to raise the alarm at their point of attack. Heavy fighting breaks out and most of Block's forces get completely devastated while Unabara manages to regroup with group. They capture and question a member of Block, and upon learning their next move, they rush to intercept the rest of their forces. A girl who used to be in the same organization as Unibara stands before them, determined to kill Unibara for leaving. He decides to handle her on his own, sending others ahead. Inside of the building Block was trying to break into, Motoharu and Awaki confront the ones leading Block's mission. But they have already primed explosives in the area where children are kept, and are using them as hostages to get access to a world into which a Leicester could not reach. But the block's leader gets interrupted by his own ally, as she brutally knocks him out. Declaring that she has her own reason for going after a Leicester, but does not want to take children as hostages to get there. Instead, she engages the two members of group in hand-to-hand -hand combat, quickly knocking out Motoharu. Owaki is also getting knocked around by her, but she manages to overcome her trauma and activate her teleportation ability mid-fight, turning the tide and knocking out the last block operative. Anabara is shocked to learn that his former friend merged her body with a grimoire to get stronger, and is disturbed by how low that organization had sunk after he left, since anyone who uses the grimoire's power like that will die in no time. Even though she is determined to kill him, his feelings for her are unwavering, and he decides to draw out the grimoire from her and take it into himself to save her life. After regrouping, it turns out that all of them were successful in stopping Block. While Item is regrouping at their base, wondering why Sivalin is still missing, they get attacked by Taitoku at school's forces, realizing that Sivalin has given them their location. Calling Shiij to get an escape vehicle for them, they are forced to split once again as school seems to be after Riku, because of her special ability. When he arrives to pick them up, Taitoku gets in the way, so Riku uses an ability crystal to enhance her powers and take control of his ability, but she gets shot. Realizing that she needs to use ability crystals, Taitoku loses his interest in her and leaves them be, pulling out with school, as the ability crystals will kill her on their own. Determined to save the only girl who was nice to him, Shiage brings her to Aiho. Shizuri catches up to him, dragging the corpse of Sivlin with her. She wants to use Rika's powers to go after Taitoku. But Shiage quickly makes Aiho take her to safety. 
while he runs away with the ability crystals she needs, forcing Shizuri to chase after him. After luring her into an empty facility, he uses his wits and sheer determination to keep Riku safe, going against all odds and defeating Shizuri on his own. Meanwhile, Taitoku is not satisfied with the information he got from their last operation, declaring he will need to take out Accelerator if he is to face a Leicester. Accelerator gets notified that there is a plot to kill Last Order, so he rushes to her location. Arriving there, he finds Taitoku torturing Kazari, who was just with Last Order and has decided to not reveal her location to him. The two of them immediately start fighting in the middle of the city, pitting their powerful special abilities against one another. At first, it seems that Taitoku's ability to control dark matter is stronger than Accelerator's ability to control vectors, but it turns out that Accelerator was making an effort to protect any innocent bystanders from their abilities while exchanging blows. Once Taitoku realizes that the tides turn and he finds himself on the ground. Before Accelerator can finish him off, Ayo arrives at the scene and stops Accelerator from killing, declaring that she will bring him out of the darkness he is in. Using this chance, Taitoku sneakily attacks Aiho, which pushes Accelerator into a frenzy and he loses control of his power. Before he ends up killing anyone, Last Order makes her appearance and confronts him. Accelerator is unable to bring himself to harm her and her soothing words manage to calm him down. Hey, thank you for staying all the way till the end. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. It takes only a second, but it means everything to us. Have a great day and see you in the next video.